All right, guys, welcome to another video. And yet again, we are talking about sweet or sweet in. Yes, this is our beloved Redmi Note 10 Pro, the only mid range device in our lineup, including a Snapdragon 732. So I don't really pay a lot of attention to gaming on this device whenever I talk about a custom ROM. And today is going to be no different. Although I will show you a small clip of 30 seconds wherein I did play Apex Legends with screen recording. And I have been using Cherish OS for the last two days. This is based on Android 13. They are clearly saying saying our new era begins so it's going to be interesting to see the complete review of what exactly is coming out of this custom raw so stay tuned till the end of the video and before we get into details if you haven't already please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going Now, as you can see over here, this is Cherish OS official OSS ROM suite, right? Tiramasu is what they are calling it. I might be pronouncing it wrong for Android 13. Cherish OS version has been bumped up to 4.0.5. Of course, this is the official build with the latest Android 13 updated on the 25th of September 2022, less than a week old. And this is going to be interesting. Now, if we talk about info over here, as you can see, uh, well, there are a few things that are mentioned here in the notes. I don't really have a huge change log. Okay, there is a change log here. Great. So OS is vendor based. Use latest firmware according to your region. I'm using an Indian device. So the latest Indian firmware is what I use. G apps build reporting bugs without proper logs will be considered as a fish <laughs> as a feature. MIA camera not included and doesn't support. Okay, so these are initial Android 13 builds and I really hope in the near future, we do get access to MIUI camera on custom ROMs. Gcam Go default camera, check support group for screenshots, update blobs from MIUI 13.0.13, added back Moto Dolby, disable debug as if enable whatever that is, parts move thermal profiles to battery section, good move there, disallow aux cam usage for Telegram and Telegram X, Add night color display temperature calibration from Coral. Coral is a device. Disable intrusive GMS components, that is Google mobile services. Added props for smoother scrolling and better responsiveness. Now, that is where I have a slight problem. Now, over the months that I've been using this device with different custom ROMs, I have started loving this phone for the teeny tiny device that is, you know, you can easily get it used for like nine or 10,000 rupees and then slap a custom ROM on it and be on your happy merry way to have a good experience. Now, that thing does hold true because as you can see, it works absolutely fine, but there are some stutters there are some jitters that are available. Now, apart from that, if you talk about the entire user interface, it is not that stuttery or jittery, but you do feel that you are not on a Snapdragon 800 series device, you are on a 732. And this is an initial, like the first few builds of Android 13. So I'm pretty sure sooner or later, they will iron out the small stutters and jitters that they have. Now, apart from this, if you have a look, this is Cherish OS that we are talking about. And this ROM is known for stability and customization. Now, if you go to quick tiles over here, you will notice that you do have a ton of quick tiles. And one good thing or whatever you want to call it that they have done is that in Android 13, if you remember, the quick tiles are dark even if you are in light mode they have disabled that somehow and that is a good thing now i'm using things like caffeine screen refresh rate shortcut i did reuse uh, you know screen recording there and apart from that you do have a ton of customization options over here of course ambient display quick tile is there reason being this device comes with a beautiful amoled panel you do have things like moto audio as well and that does work absolutely okay now, other Android 13 things, shortcuts have been moved over here for the power menu, which gives you advanced reboot and setting shortcut here. Now, active apps, uh, Android 13 feature is sort of not there, the quick setting tiles bottom of that. So that is something I'll have to see if it can be enabled from settings or not. Now, the good thing about Android 13, as I have been saying in multiple Android 13 custom ROM videos, is the smoothness, the cohesiveness, it's really, really neat. And if you go to the multitasking menu, you will see that it is rock solid smooth, very, very fast and works great, right? Now, there are a few Android 13 features that I have been showing off in, uh, you know, a lot of videos. So say, let's go here and open an image and you go to the multitasking menu. Okay, is it gonna work? 
So ideally it should fetch the image directly. Okay, it is doing that, right? So yeah, that feature is definitely working. It's not working that accurately, but it is working nonetheless. You have select and screenshot at the bottom. You do have split to top or split screen multitasking along with app pause function available as well, right? Now that takes us to another option over here that is the quick wallpaper chooser or quick wallpaper picker from Android 12 L, which is working absolutely fine. If you go to wallpaper in style, you do have themed icons. You have multiple options for color palettes over here now, and you do have a ton of wallpapers from Google Pixel as well. I kind of like this one, so I'll allow it to download and let's go ahead and apply the home screen and on the lock screen as well. Now moving on, as you can see, you do have your standard Android 13 widgets, which are present and they work absolutely okay. If you go to settings, you will find your good old trustworthy Pixel launcher, which is doing a great job. Now, if we then talk about important things like security, so if you actually go to the Play Store and go to settings, you will see that the device is certified and Widevine L1 is present, safety net is passing, so you will not really have a lot of problems using banking applications on this beautiful, beautiful ROM. Now, if you then go to about phone and click on Android version, you will see that this new user interface, the Cherish UI or whatever you want to call it, it looks more like Oxygen OS and uh, you see this? It, okay, I, I really want to see this. Give me a minute here. So I'm quickly going to say change the wallpaper to something else. Uh, let's switch it to this one. I'm curious. I am curious. Oh, wow. Wow, this is a very good addition. Small things like these make the kid in me really, really happy. So whatever wallpaper you are on, it real time changes the wallpaper in about device as well. Very, very good thing there. All the device specifications are present over here. The kernel that you have is the Meraki kernel along with September security patch. The Android version is of course 13. So you do have access to your beautiful Android 13 Easter egg, which keeps changing every time you long press on it. And there are n number of combinations that you can have here. So very, very neat addition there. Now we are not done talking about this ROM or settings, right? Because the first highlight of this ROM is Cherish settings. Now the way they have laid out this customization menu is really, really neat. And every time I flash a custom ROM, the first thing that I go and do is I check the customization options because, hey, custom ROM, right? Right. So status bar customization is present. Ton of features there, as you can see, including privacy indicator, quick setting customizations are present. Now in custom ROM review videos, I really don't go ahead and dive into each and every option over here, but I would really like to know from you guys for every custom ROM, do you want me to make a separate video wherein I, you know, cover the entire customization menu and tell you that what exactly that particular option means. So give this video a like and let me know that in the comment section here. Now, if you then go to themes, you do have theme customization, including overriding monet as well. You do have animations, which is blank. So of course, this is work in progress. Lock screen customization is present to a certain extent, as you can see. And then you have power menu customization, notifications and miscellaneous. Now you have this option, unlock higher FPS in games and I've not tried VGMI, these days I'm playing Apex Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile. And before we proceed to benchmark numbers and battery numbers and stuff, I'm going to show you a 30 second clip of my gameplay in Apex Mobile. Remember the screen recording was on, so that would have put some extra load on the Note 10 Pro 732 processor, but have a look at that particular clip. All right, so to sum up the gaming experience here, if you're not recording the screen, you can just about play it. It's, it's not unplayable, but you can manage to play on the lowest settings with about 50 FPS. You don't have 60 FPS in there, let alone 90 FPS. 
the device doesn't get really hot because of course let's face it 700 series chipset right so you can play if there are a lot of enemies it will lag but i'm happy that i was able to win the match and i didn't really die because of lag which mostly happens when i play on miui on the redmi note 10 pro so if you really want a gaming focused rom this might not be it but if you want a rom that gives you android 13 and a lot of customization options this baby is definitely a good choice now next up let's talk about the battery backup and charging speeds so if we go to history over here as you can see 10 to 100 percent took a whole two hours and 20 minutes that's with a 33 watt charger and then 100 to 20 percent 16 to 17 hours and not a lot of a screen time but as you can see again it took one hour 47 minutes so not only the battery backup is okay not that great you also need to work on the charging speeds on this particular ROM. So those two things are something you have to consider before you actually go ahead and try to flash this. Maybe you can try a different kernel, but I don't know how many kernels will work well on Android 13 these days. So all in all, if you ask me, this is a good ROM. And before we conclude, let's actually talk about the benchmark numbers. So if we talk about Antutu benchmark here, as you can see, 369, 909, 3% oh, 3 degrees of increase in temperature and 3% battery drop. Now, if we then go to Geekbench over here, okay-ish scored because I really don't expect a lot of benchmark numbers from a 700 series chipset. 569 single core and 1323 multi-core. Similar story with, uh, you know, the CPU throttle test over here. Let me also quickly show you if we have uh, unlimited storage on Google Photos or not. So let's go to the screenshot over here. This is the first one. This is the second one. So yes, it, it does give you decent performance as far as, you know, multitasking or constant throttling is concerned. You do have unlimited photos storage available over here. So all in all, this is a decent ROM. Once they, you know, finalize it and make it even better, I think you can use it as a daily driver. But if you're not into gaming, you can use it as a daily driver even now. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one. This is Kalash, signing off with PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.